Welcome to English Without Limits. In today's lesson, we're going to learn how to use the present perfect tense. The present perfect tense is what we use when we're talking about something that is finished, but we're not saying when it happened. That's not so important. We're simply stating that it happened at some time, and often it has some results that are still with us. I hope you enjoy this lesson. In our last lesson, we learned more about cooking. Two lessons ago, we learned how to bake cookies. And in our last lesson, we learned all about different ways to cook. We learned the words for how to boil something, how to roast it, how to barbecue it, how to saute something. And we learned all these different ways that you can cook many different kinds of food. It was a very good lesson. Let's join the class as they begin to review this information that is more about cooking. All right, welcome back. So, can anybody tell me what I'm doing? Chop, chop, chop. Chop, chop. yes. Chopping, or I chopped. What about, what was saute? What is something you saute? What was that, what was that that you guys sauteed? Starts with an M. Ma, ma. Yes, mushrooms. You saute mushrooms. What about broil? Is broil is, is you broil chicken? And is it in a in wait? Is it is broil in a pan, in a pot, or in the oven? What's broil? In a pan, a pot, but, but in the oven. oven. It's in the oven. Broil is in the oven. What else is in the oven? A roast. A roast. Okay? Let's review some of the words that you learned in our last lesson about how to cook things. I will show you a picture and I will describe what this cooking is like. Then you must give the word, the name for this kind of cooking. I will describe it and wait for a moment for you to give your answer and then I will give the correct answer. All right, are you ready? Well, let's begin then. In this first kind of cooking, we take a pot we put a liquid in the pot, water or soup or something, and we make it very, very hot. There are bubbles coming up and it's happening very quickly. What is this kind of cooking? That's right, this is boil. This is boil. The second kind of cooking is where we may take a frying pan and we will put a bit of oil in it and cook something very lightly. We don't cook it very much, just a bit. We often cook mushrooms this way. What is the name for this kind of cooking? This is saute, saute. The third kind of cooking is where we put something into a large square box-like thing. We push some buttons and it gets hot very quickly in this machine. What is this kind of cooking? Correct, that's a microwave. We microwave something. The fourth kind of cooking is where you take something, usually meat and maybe vegetables, you put it into a kind of pot, 
put it into the oven and the heat is on the bottom of the oven and all around. The heat cooks the meat and the vegetables slowly. What is this kind of cooking? This is roast. Roast. The next kind of cooking is where you have a pot with hot water in it and the hot water is boiling. Then you put something above there, maybe another container, another kind of pot or a grill, and from the boiling water, this food gets cooked above it. What do we call that? We say we are steaming food. We steam our food by doing that. Now in this next kind of cooking, we may take meat, put it in the oven, but the heat is just above it. It's only above, not below. So this heat coming down from above in the oven is very hot. What is the name for this kind of cooking? That's broil. Broil. Now, this next kind of cooking is where you have something in a pot, like soup or a sauce, and it's hot. There are bubbles coming up, but it's not very hot. It's only a little bit hot. The bubbles are coming up slowly. What do we call this kind of cooking? This is simmer. Simmer. Now the next kind of cooking is where you have a pan and you might put some oil in it and you would put vegetables and maybe meat in and you stir it while it's cooking. And it's not a liquid, it's all pieces of meat or vegetables, and you're stirring it around. What do we call this? This is called stir-fry. Stir-fry. Now there's one more kind, and this is where we might do this kind of cooking outside. We would have a container with some kind of fire in it, some kind of heat, and we put a metal grill on top of this, and we put the meat on top of this kind of fire outside. What do we call that? We call that barbecue. Barbecue. And the last kind, this is where you take a pan, maybe you put some oil in it, and you might take something like meat, sometimes vegetables, and you just cook it in this pan on top of the stove. You just let it cook quite a lot in here. What do we call that? That's fry. We fry something. Well, very good. I hope this helps you to remember all the different ways of cooking that we covered in our last lesson. English has many different tenses. And the tenses all give us different information about the thing that happened. Sometimes they tell us that it happened in the past, sometimes in the present, sometimes in the future. But they're telling us more than that. They're telling us how we look at the thing that we're talking about. Now, each of our tenses gives a little bit different information about the thing that's happened. And it's important to understand this because if we don't understand this, we may miss something important that someone is trying to say. If we're talking about the past, we could use the simple past tense, the simple past tense that we learned a while ago. That just tells us that something happened before now. Today we're going to learn about the present perfect tense. The present perfect tense tells us that the thing we're talking about is finished, so it happened in the past, but it tells us also different information about it. Let's join the class as they begin to learn about the present perfect tense and all that it means. Okay, so we're going to move on from kitchen activities. We're going to look at some grammar. Woohoo! Present perfect. Does anybody guess what present perfect is? 
<laughs> it's okay. So I will tell you, it is an action, a completed action, and this is the tricky part. It says present, but it's actually talking about something in the past, a completed action in the past. Okay? And it focuses on the action, not the time. Okay? So, <clears throat> I will give you an example. Have you ever gone to school? You can answer that question. Yes, I was at school. Say that in one sentence, sir. Yes, I was at school. And you say, yes, I have gone to school. Or I have been. No, there's no been. It's just, yes, I have gone to school. Have you ever gone skydiving? Skydiving is when you jump out of a plane with a parachute, okay? So you would say, no, I have not gone skydiving. Present perfect. Uh, so my right, com it's a completed action in the past. It focuses on act the action, not on the time. And it's, this is the formula. So it's have plus the past participle of a verb. So you have cooked, okay? Or you could say, yeah, have cooked, okay? Or you could say has, okay? Okay? So I will ask you some have you ever questions. Have you ever on swimming in the lake. Sasha. Um, I am. Sometimes I am. Sometimes you swim in the lake? Or no? Do you swim in the lake? Have you ever swam in the lake? Well, I am. Sometimes. Sometimes. Oh, okay. Okay. Has anybody never Gone swimming in the lake? No. No? Yes. Yes? So if you said yes, you could say yes, I have swam in the lake. Right? What if somebody has not? Say no, I have not swam in the lake. Have you ever been outside Chernobyl? Yes. So I how would you say that? Again? Yes, I've been outside. Yes, I have been, been outside. Right. What about, have you ever eaten chicken, Misha? <laughs> yes. I have? I have eaten chicken. Good, okay. You heard the teacher explaining the meaning of the present perfect. Let's review that and add a little bit to it. Why do we call it the present perfect? Well, the word perfect, it has different meanings, but one meaning of this word is that something is complete. It is finished. It does not still have something to be done. So we can look at this tense as being a tense that says something is perfected or finished, completed by the present, by now. So this thing is finished before now. That's why we call it the present perfect tense and we don't use a past tense to describe it. So this tense carries the idea that something is finished and by saying that 
it stresses the idea, the important part here, is that this thing is finished. It's complete. It does not still have to go on. And so we would use the present perfect tense to say things like, I have finished my homework. In other words, it's all done. There's nothing left that I have to do. Or I have read the book. It's finished. I don't need to keep doing it. Now there's another part of the meaning of the present perfect. The thing that's finished by now, the thing that we have done, it has results. And those results are still with us. For example, if I say, I have broken my pencil, then here is the pencil. It is broken. It is still broken in the now. The results of this action are still with us. I have broken my pencil, so I have a broken pencil. Now, there's another part of the meaning to the present perfect tense. And this is, it's talking about something that happened in the past. Maybe it happened once. Maybe it happened many times. But it happened at some unspecified time. The time is unspecified. That is, we do not say when it happened. We simply say that it happened. We simply say the fact is it happened. So we would never use the present perfect tense with a time marker. We would never use a time phrase like yesterday or last week when we're using the present perfect tense. We would not say that. So I would not say, I have been to Singapore last week. We would use a different way to say that. But this thing that we're talking about, the question is, has it ever happened? This is one part of the meaning. And so I could ask someone, have you ever been to Singapore? Maybe you went there, maybe you didn't. Did it happen? And so you could say, I have been to Singapore. Or maybe I have not been to Singapore. And the time that it happened is not important. That's not what we are asking. We are saying, yes, it happened. And maybe it happened more than once. I could say, I have been to Singapore three times, or four times, or maybe just once. But we are not saying when it happened. So the meaning of the present perfect is that this is completed. The results of this thing are still with us. And we are not saying what time it happened. These things are the meaning of the present perfect. So how do we form the present perfect? Well, as the teacher said, we take the present form of the auxiliary verb have, and then we add the past participle of the verb. So the present form of the auxiliary verb has is, I have, you for one, have, he, she, or it has, we, have, you for more than one, have, and they have. The only one it changes for is for he, she, or it. Then it's has, not have. So then we add the past participle of the verb. The past participle is one of the past forms of the verb. It's the third principal part of the verb, if you have a list of the three different forms of a verb. With regular verbs, the past participle usually ends in ed, although sometimes it ends in en. If it's an irregular verb, the irregular verbs are all different, so you simply have to learn them and memorize them. Now, when do you know to use ed and when do you use en? Most verbs will take ed. We use en 
when it sounds awkward, it sounds difficult to say ed on the end of a verb. For example, if the verb ends in a t, a verb like eat, to say eated, adding ed, sounds awkward. It sounds difficult. So we say eaten instead. Take a verb like take. It ends in a k sound. So if we say taked, that sounds difficult. It sounds awkward. So we say taken. So most of the time, the regular verbs will end in ed. And if it sounds awkward or difficult, try changing it to en. You'll probably be right most of the time. So let's practice this a little bit. I will give you a verb on the screen, and I will give you a subject. Maybe it's the name of a person. Maybe it's a pronoun like we or I or he. You must take this subject and put the verb into the correct present perfect form. So remember, take the subject, add the present form of have, the auxiliary, and then the past participle of the verb. For this exercise, we will not use any irregular verbs. We will only use regular ones. All right, I will wait for a moment to you to give the answer, and then I will give the correct answer. All right, let's begin. The verb is walk. The subject is suji. Put this in the present perfect. Suji has walked. The verb is use. The subject is we. Put this in the present perfect. We have used. Talk and they. Put this in the present perfect. They have talked. Look and I. I have looked. Need and Sanjar. Sanjar has needed. Move and you. You have moved. Turn and Misha. Misha has turned. Want and we. We have wanted. Follow and Vika. Vika has followed. 